Prague, capital city of the Czech Republic, is bisected by the Vyeltava River. Nicknamed the city of a hundred spires, it's known for its old town square, the heart of its historic core, with colorful Baroque buildings, Gothic churches, and the medieval astronomical clock, which gives an animated hourly show. Completed in 1402, pedestrian Charles Bridge is lined with statues of Catholic saints. Prague is home to a number of well-known cultural attractions, many of which survived the violence and destruction of 20th century Europe. Main attractions include Prague Castle, Charles Bridge, Old Town Square with the Prague Astronomical Clock, the Jewish Quarter, Petron Hill, and Viserad. The extensive historic center of Prague has been included in the UNESCO list of World Heritage Sites. Prague was once a hidden gem, overshadowed by its flasher neighbors to the west. But the city couldn't keep its marvels a secret for too long. Now, it's a haven for travelers seeking awe-inspiring experiences at affordable prices. Breakfast is the most important meal. Many Prague hotels offer complimentary breakfast. The best times to visit Prague are the spring and early fall when the weather is mild and places are not overcrowded so. Plan to visit the city during the cooler months. Guided tours can help you discover the city through the eyes of a local. Many of them are free. Be aware of pickpockets who hover around the tourist hot spots like the Astronomical Clock and Charles Bridge. Some taxi drivers have been known to overcharge tourists. Phone for a taxi or go to an authorized taxi stand. The best way to get around Prague is on foot or by public transportation. Exploring this city on foot is a treat for the eyes, and many of the most noteworthy attractions are within walking distance of one another. Let's explore more about the best places to visit with our video of the top tourist attractions and things to do in Prague. Before we get started, make sure you have subscribed our YouTube channel and click the bell button so you don't miss our new upcoming videos. Number 1. Wenceslas Square Wenceslas Square is one of the main city squares and the center of the business and cultural communities in the new town of Prague. Many historical events occurred there, and it is a traditional setting for demonstrations, celebrations, and other public gatherings. It is also the place with the busiest pedestrian traffic in the whole country. The square is named after St. Wenceslas, the patron saint of Bohemia. It is part of the historic center of Prague, a world heritage site, less a square than a boulevard, Wenceslas Square has the shape of a very long rectangle, in a northwest, southeast direction. The street slopes upward to the southeast side. At that end, the street is dominated by the Grand Neoclassical Czech National Museum. The northwest end runs up against the border between the new town and the old town. Number 2. Charles Bridge Charles Bridge is a medieval stone arch bridge that crosses the Vyeltava River in Prague. Its construction started in 1357 under the auspices of King Charles IV and finished in the early 15th century. The bridge replaced the old Judith Bridge built 1172 that had been badly damaged by a flood in 1342. This new bridge was originally called Stone Bridge or Prague Bridge, but has been referred to as Charles Bridge since 1870. Throughout its history, Charles Bridge has suffered several disasters and witnessed many historic events. The bridge is particularly famous for its many fine old statues. Among the most important are those of Holy Roman Emperor Charles IV and John of Nepomuk. Charles Bridge is the must-visit attraction in Prague. Might be quite overwhelming. Although the bridge is immensely beautiful and perfect for a leisure stroll as it's been a pedestrian zone for some time now, it's almost always crowded with tourists, and it's better to come prepared and know what to expect. You should not miss it out while exploring the capital of the Czech Republic. Number 3. Prague Castle. Prague Castle is one of Prague's main attractions and may be one of your most memorable experiences of Prague. Prague Castle is a castle complex in Prague, built in the 9th century. It is the official office of the President of the Czech Republic. The castle was a seat of power for kings of Bohemia, Holy Roman Emperors, and presidents of Czechoslovakia. The castle buildings represent many of the architectural styles of the last millennium. Prague Castle includes Gothic St. Vitus Cathedral, Romanesque Basilica of St. George, a monastery, and several palaces, gardens, and defense towers. Most of the castle areas are open to tourists. The castle houses several museums, including the National Gallery Collection of Bohemian Baroque and Mannerism Art, exhibition dedicated to Czech history, Toy Museum, and the Picture Gallery of Prague Castle, based on the collection of Rudolf II. According to the Guinness Book of Records, Prague Castle is the largest ancient castle in the world occupying an area of almost 70,000 square meters at about 570 meters in length and an average of about 130 meters wide. The castle is among the most visited tourist attractions in Prague, attracting over 1.8 million visitors annually. 
Plan the night before to visit Prague Castle early in the morning. If you go early, you'll be able to beat the crowd. Prague Castle opens at 9 a.m. Plan to arrive a little before 9. Number 4. Old Town Square and the Astronomical Clock The Prague Astronomical Clock, or Prague or Lodge, is a medieval astronomical clock attached to the Old Town Hall in Prague. The clock was first installed in 1410, making it the third oldest astronomical clock in the world, and the oldest clock still in operation. The Ore Lodge is mounted on the southern wall of Old Town Hall in the Old Town Square. The clock mechanism has three main components, the astronomical dial, representing the position of the sun and moon in the sky, and displaying various astronomical details. Statues of various Catholic saints stand on either side of the clock. The Walk of the Apostles, an hourly show of moving apostle figures and other sculptures, notably a figure of a skeleton that represents death, striking the time, and a calendar dial with medallions, representing the months. According to local legend, the city will suffer if the clock is neglected and its good operation is placed in jeopardy. A ghost, mounted on the clock, was supposed to nod its head in confirmation. According to the legend, the only hope was represented by a boy born on New Year's night. The astronomical dial is a form of mechanical astrolabe, a device used in medieval astronomy. Alternatively, one may consider the Orlodge to be a primitive planetarium. Displaying the current state of the universe, the astronomical dial has a background that represents the standing Earth and sky, and surrounding it operate four main moving components, the zodiacal ring, an outer rotating ring, an icon representing the sun, and an icon representing the moon. Number 5. National Theater The National Theater in Prague is known as the alma mater of Czech opera, and as the national monument of Czech history and art. The National Theater belongs to the most important Czech cultural institutions, with a rich artistic tradition, which helped to preserve and develop the most important features of the nation, the Czech language, and a sense for a Czech musical and dramatic way of thinking. Today, the National Theatre consists of three artistic ensembles, opera, ballet, and drama. They alternate in their performances in the historic building of the National Theatre, in the Theatre of the Estates, and in the Kaorat Theatre. All three artistic ensembles select their repertoire both from classical heritage and modern authors. The National Theatre was opened for the first time on 11 June 1881 to honor the visit of Crown Prince Rudolf of Austria. Bedrich Smetana's opera Libius was given its world premiere, conducted by Adolf Sech. Another 11 performances were presented after that. Then the theatre was closed down to enable the completion of the finishing touches. While this work was underway, a fire broke out on 12 August 1881, which destroyed the Copper Dome, the auditorium, and the stage of the theatre. Number 6. Dancing House. The Dancing House, or Fred and Ginger, is the nickname given to the National Nederland and building on the Rassen Embankment in Prague. It was designed by the Croatian Czech architect Vlado Milunic in cooperation with Canadian American architect Frank Jerry on a vacant riverfront plot. The building was designed in 1992 and was completed four years later in 1996. The non traditional design was controversial at the time because the house stands out among the Baroque, Gothic, and Art Nouveau buildings for which Prague is famous. The then Czech president, Václav Havel, who lived next to the site for decades, had avidly supported this project, hoping that the building would become a center of cultural activity. Jerry originally named the house Fred and Ginger after the dancers Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. The house resembles a pair of dancers, but this nickname is now rarely used. Jerry himself was later afraid to import American Hollywood kitsch to Prague and thus discarded his own idea. While the building consists largely of offices and a hotel, great views can be enjoyed from the top floor restaurant. The cafe is also located on the main level. Number 7. Prague Zoo Prague Zoological Garden is a zoo in Prague. It was opened in 1930 with the goal to advance the study of zoology, protect wildlife, and educate the public in the district of Troja in the north of Prague. In 2013, the zoo occupied 58 hectares with 50 hectares in use for exhibits and housed around 5,000 animals from just 676 species, including 132 species listed as threatened. The zoo has contributed significantly to saving P.R. Zewalski's horse. For many years, it was the leading breeder of the subspecies. Number 8. The Clementinum The Clementinum is a historic complex of buildings in Prague. Until recently, the complex hosted the National, University, and Technical Libraries. The city library was also nearby on Mariansk Namesty. In 29, the Technical Library and the Municipal Library moved to the Prague National Technical Library at Technica 6. It is in use as the National Library of the Czech Republic. In 25, 
The Czech National Library received the UNESCO Jikji Prize. With more than 6 million books, the Clementinum's collection is huge and includes copies of almost every book published in the Czech Republic. Number 9. National Museum The National Museum is a Czech museum institution intended to systematically establish, prepare, and publicly exhibit natural, scientific, and historical collections. It was founded in 1818 by Kaspar Maria Sternberg. Historian Frantisic Palaku was also strongly involved in the foundation of the museum. The National Museum is the largest museum in the Czech Republic. It covers a range of disciplines and collecting fields from the natural sciences to specialized areas of the social sciences. It brings together collections of materials documenting the development of nature and the history and prehistory of both Czech and foreign origins. The museum's exhibits are located in a number of buildings around Prague. The National Museum also organizes a range of cultural and educational programs. A particularly enjoyable highlight is the archaeology exhibit with its extensive collection of 1st and 2nd century Roman artifacts, along with numerous bronze and early Iron Age finds. Number 10. St. Vitus Cathedral The Metropolitan Cathedral of St. Vitus, Wenceslaus, and Adalbert is a Roman Catholic Metropolitan Cathedral in Prague, the seat of the Archbishop of Prague. Until 1997, the cathedral was dedicated only to St. Vitus and is still commonly named only as St. Vitus Cathedral. This cathedral is a prominent example of Gothic architecture and is the largest and most important church in the country. Located within Prague Castle and containing the tombs of many Bohemian kings and Holy Roman emperors, the cathedral is under the ownership of the Czech government as part of the Prague Castle complex. Cathedral dimensions are 124 by 16 meters, the main tower is 102.8 meters high, front tower is 82 meters, arch height 33.2 meters. Be sure to make the climb up the cathedral's main tower for splendid views over Prague. Visitors are also welcome to attend Cathedral Mass. Number 11. St. Nicholas Church The Church of St. Nicholas is a late Gothic and Baroque church in the old town of Prague. It was built between 1732 to 1737 on the site of a Gothic church from the 13th century which was also dedicated to St. Nicholas. The church was formerly used by the Czech and Slovak Orthodox Church. Since 1920 it has been the main church of the Czechoslovak Hussite Church and its Prague diocese. The church also features a bell tower, which visitors are permitted to climb, from the top of which are great views over the church's huge dome and the old city. Try to time your visit to coincide with one of the regular organ concerts held here, including Mozart's Requiem and other notable classical pieces. English language guided tours are available. Number 12. The Church of Our Lady Before Tin The Church of Mother of God Before Tin, often translated as Church of Our Lady Before Tin, is a Gothic church and a dominant feature of the old town of Prague, Czech Republic. It has been the main church of this part of the city since the 14th century. The church's two towers are 80 meter high, and each tower's spire is topped by eight smaller spires and two layers of four. The northern portal is an example of Gothic sculpture from the parlor workshop, with a relief depicting the crucifixion. The main entrance is located on the church's western face, through a narrow passage between the houses in front of the church. The church is illuminated by a number of cantilevered Gothic windows with stone tracery. The church is accessible by four Gothic portals, 